What is going on, Clippers fans? Welcome to Season 3, Episode 29 of Clips and Dip. The Clippers are 8-7, and seven, back above 500, where they belong for the most part. I am Chuck Mockler. We got the full crew. Will Updike is here. Adam Osland is here. Thank you for hanging on the... There was some Clippers talk last night. Will and I did Chuck a little... Snaked <laughs> Chuck snaked me. Chuck snaked me on the post-game radio. I needed a win. Um... We did a little hang. Uh, if you want to watch it, uh, Will and I talked about the game as well over at youtube.com slash at Clippers podcast, or you can listen to it because it was an audio pod too. We're going to be talking the uh, best worst back-to-back that the Clippers just had, the upcoming game against the Magic without Norm Powell, which means big things for Jordan Miller. And then we have to kind of blow off some steam on this Kawhi Leonard uh, shooting update and a fun, good thing that Steve Ballmer did. But before we get into that, fellas, it's basically soup season. Uh, Adam, Will, how are you doing on this chilly Tuesday evening in Los Angeles? I'm good. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm all right. Let's get to the Clippers, man. That's what the people want. They don't want to know how the hell we're doing. They don't care. They don't care what we're going through. They're eight and seven. They are on top of the world. As uh, Justin W. pointed out on clip or on Twitter, only three and a half games out of that first spot, baby. Um, it's but... right there. I can taste it. <laughs> kissing. Kissing the one seed for the most part. We beat the Jazz. They beat the Warriors in possibly the most chaotic ending of the season so far, maybe. Um, shout out to Amir Coffee for making that interesting. Um, what were we encouraged by? What did we like from this? polarizing back-to-back as i mentioned they played the worst team in the conference and then yesterday played the best team in the conference beating them once again well i think it shows that you know we've talked about how slim the margins are but even more so matchups are everything for this team with with how those things kind of go i mean it was very apparent uh in those back-to-back houston nights that's just not a great matchup for this clippers team uh, whereas like the Warriors, we've matched up really well with all season. So something to keep in mind, uh, if you're on the, this is our year train is like sort of how that bracket breaks is, is going to determine everything. Not that it isn't important in other years, but like this Clippers team just doesn't have the versatility of other years. We can't throw a lot of different looks at you. And now with Norm Powell out of the lineup, like it, again, these slim margins are getting even, even slimmer. They're doing a dance on, on a razor blade right now. Uh, Ooh. and could, do could, the splits. could fall off or do the splits at any given moment um so it's it's one of those things to monitor and it's one of those things to monitor with your expectations too because there might be some teams that are lower down in the standings that you're like oh this should be a breeze but matchup wise it's just not it, you know the clippers just don't have the utility to, to sort of pull that out yeah adam what were you encouraged from from this back to back and we're going to talk the other side, uh, too, at some point. I don't know if people have talked enough about the passing the last two games. They mm-hmm. had 30 assists against Utah and 29 last night against the Golden State Warriors. For a team that just plays a bunch of iso ball all the time, it's crazy how many assists they've had. James Harden playing through you know illness yesterday and the day before. He was sick for both of those games. It sounded like when they got back from Houston, that was the deal. Yeah. And he played over 40 minutes. That was pretty incredible. You could and see it take spry. something. He was like getting to the rim really? more often in the <laughs> right. He was getting to the rim more often in that Warriors game than it felt like, despite being sick. Yeah. I mean, he airballed a three that looked like his legs were gone late <laughs> and true. missed a layup. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still, yeah. I mean, 16 assists to three turnovers. They have no chance without him in that game. Um, and I think that's good leadership you see a guy like that playing through illness not wanting to come out they don't win without him they don't win without what norman powell did last night off some of the passes from james harden late in the game curling for those threes that was a really really good win if not their best win at into a dome so far it's right there with the san antonio i guess 26 point comeback but you might see it as a better victory because golden state warriors were 10 and 2 yeah, we did it um, in front of the guy who picked the popcorn flavor. So that always feels good. Um, to that was the most cohesive, I think. The, Charles and I touched on this a little bit last night, but that was the most cohesive the offense has kind of looked to me. Um, just just the way, the way I mean, Harden was great, but the way that everybody was passing, I felt like the ball was moving a lot more and in a productive way. Yeah. Yeah. I think the lineup that I really liked uh, 
from last night was the Harden, Man, Amir, Nico, and Zoo lineup. Unsurprisingly, it played well because those, I think, Will, you brought it up. Like, Harden's the new guy in that lineup. <laughs> All four of those other guys definitely know what they're doing. But that lineup, was super fun. Um, and the defense, just like all the way around, the matchups, we talked about it, right? Like uh, Derek Jones Jr., Chris Dunn, Terrence, Amir, and Nico, that's that's an issue for the Warriors specifically. And it's nice to see the Clips take advantage of that. Um, and Terrence Mann, making things happen off the bench yet again. He seems comfortable there. And it's nice when he gets to kind of stagger his time with the starters and stuff too, because it's a nice boost. You could say three out of the last four or five games now, he's looked much better. The last game at Intuit Dome before they returned against the Toronto Raptors with those defensive plays late. Mm. And then the first game coming off the bench where they would still lose that Wednesday night in Houston, but he had 14 points. He had the meaty, chunky stat line that we like to see. And then last night, he's getting comfortable again. Coach Lou said, I'm glad I got my guy back after <laughs> he started coming off the bench. So hopefully... I think the big shots that he hit, the dunk to start the fourth quarter, that three-pointer after he had just missed one in the near side corner, knocking that down, if anything can help his confidence and really turn his season around right now, as we are 20% of the way through the season now. So <laughs> some of these trends and patterns, they might be here to stay if they don't if they don't go the other way soon. So I, I'm happy for Terrence. Yeah, nice to see Terrence bounce back. Mo Bamba had a good debut. Um, which I think you could really tell the difference between what, not saying it was light years ahead, but what a not as much of a project and someone who's played more functional NBA minutes can look like. And when you compare kind of what Bamba looked like versus what Kai Jones was bringing to the team, I think Bamba's first possession, they called a dunk for him. He set the screen, he cut, they threw him a new, like it's a nice way to make him feel welcome. And then he's just a big target for James Harden to hit. Like it's, I, I, he has a knee issue, of course, because the Clippers can't have a backup center without that backup center having a knee issue. But I was encouraged by what we saw from the backup five spot when he was there. Yeah, I thought he looked really good that first game where he played, what, around 15 minutes against Utah. I think he had nine and eight and 10 minutes in the first half. Yeah. It looked like he was trying to buck the uh, narrative on him that he doesn't have a great motor. And that's kind of been what has held him back over the years, the inconsistency. But then post game, he's talking about how that injury that kept him out the first couple of weeks with the Clippers, he was just playing through it last year with the Philadelphia 76ers. So I wonder how much that affected his performance and if they can get more out of him this season because of that and because, I don't know, Jeff Van Gundy lighting a fire under everybody. So <laughs> I just hope, I feel like Mo Bamba, if he just brings that right level of energy, He's going to be a big upgrade over what Mason Plumley brought last season. Yeah, and he won't handle the ball and try and do showtime passes, which I think is another thing that he will do better than Mason Plumley. Um, did, did he do that? <laughs> why would he do that? <laughs> why, why would he do that, though? Um, and then Amir continues to just make things happen. Amir was awesome last night. Dude, it's the best value contract in the NBA. <laughs> He's making so little money. It's absolutely insane. Um, Anything else encouraging kind of over these two games before we get into the discouraging things that, that we may have seen despite the win? Discouraging. Eight and seven. I mean, come on. It's our year. <laughs> Will, what else were you encouraged by? We got one efficient Harden game out of the back-to-back. -back. So it's pretty good. Pretty we'll good take stuff. it. Pretty good stuff there. <laughs> yeah, so that is a nice segue into kind of the discouraging things. Harden played 75 minutes in two days. Um which is maybe more impressive than what Darren Fox did scoring wise the other night. If you think about James Harden's age and things like that, we saw it almost come back to bite us in the Warriors game. Like those late Amir bringing the ball up that last possession, Norm bringing it just people are clamoring for this help. But like, Will, we kind of talked about it. Who is helping this? And I don't mean that disrespectfully. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's really really difficult, and I mean, Adam Charles and I were talking a bunch about this, but like the Clippers' record is going to determine whether they're a, a a low. I would still say like low interest buyer or just a huge seller after December fifteenth, and you know it's it's just looking more and more, especially like as injuries and stuff kind of pile up. Certainly minutes on these big guys like 
are they really a mid tier piece away? You know, like, is that really the difference maker? And, I, and, and I, th I, th I just think it depends. I, th I think it depends what does Kawhi look like? And again, what is their record as of December 15th? I was listening to you guys uh, from last night's pod on the treadmill earlier. I do think we disagree in one respect. I think Kawhi cures a lot of what ails them with James Harden. I do. Like, guys, who had the highest usage rating last season? It wasn't James. It's Kawhi. Yeah. Like, he's going to knock down that usage rating on James Harden, which is up 10% from last season, right away. I think that will bring back the legs, the efficiency shooting-wise. I do love the way Kawhi could blend in to this Clippers team. Mm. Oh, I know yeah. that's crazy to say for a superstar. You think it's just going to be this big piece. How do you work it in? But the way they're constructed defensively, the way they play out there, that's Kawhi's style. And it's not like he's taking away touches from guys that need the basketball so much. Even Norman Powell isn't the guy that creates much for himself. True. It's mostly yeah. get it and go catch and shoot stuff. So, what they need is another guy who can create, who can play a ton of one-on-one -on -one basketball at a high efficiency rate. That's Kawhi. I, it's the perfect guy that would fit this roster. Now, who knows uh, when he's oh, we're going to talk, we his talk about his return that. later on yeah. in the show. <laughs> but I stop asking us too. I guess stop asking. <laughs> Nick Saban in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not answering, so stop asking. Stop asking me about it. <laughs> I, I guess, long story short, I'm higher on this team than I was coming into this season because of the way they played so far without Kawhi and just seeing how he could elevate this team. It it seems like the perfect hand and glove, big glove fit with Kawhi Leonard if he can get back. Yeah, he's a, I mean, you you nailed it like with the defense. Like this, Kawhi Leonard on this team defensively is a damn nightmare for anybody else to match up with. Like if the Warriors thought they had, specifically if the Warriors thought they had matchup problems before, imagine having Kawhi Leonard in the starting lineup, you know, moving whoever out. Um, one thing that did come up that I thought was discouraging over this two game stretch is, and Adam, this is uh -oh. something you've kind of called out. Uh oh. I mean this respect, I know you were right about this. The zoo motor. Ty Lu said now he's given zoo three stints instead of uh, two stints per half. Um, another good thing that Mo Bamba's showing serviceableness so far, but that's something to kind of monitor too, uh, just as we go on with this thing, because that has been kind of a knock on him before. Yeah, multiple times now so far this season, he has commented on believing that Avisa Zubas looked a little bit lethargic out there, looked a little bit tired out there. Um, I hope, what are his minutes at now? Because at one point they were almost like 35 minutes a game. Just stay above 30. Can He's Zoo 34. Hold, can he hold up just playing 30? Just around there. Like that's that's enough for me. Just a 30 or above. But I'm not expecting him to play 36 minutes every night. I don't know if he has that conditioning in him. Yeah, he was at 36 last night, 33 the night before. Lowest he's played 27 versus the Rockets on the 13th. Uh, when he misses some of the game. chippies, it looks like he's tired out there, you know? He's and the then, closest guy to the rim. <laughs> yeah. It looks terrible. <laughs> it, and that's where the Zubats haters come from. Aesthetically, it is not pleasing when he misses <laughs> those bunnies like that. And when you're, you know, so much dependent on that touch around the basket because he's not always dunking it, like just any bit taken out of your legs, I think can affect that to some degree. Yeah, it's a good call. Um, and then the other thing that was discouraging is the norm thing. Norm's hamstring strained. We're not sure how long he's going to be out. He was he was questionable to return. Then he came back in. Someone was tweeting at us. They're like, I was surprised he returned. And I was like, but were you also not surprised at all that he returned? Like, they're chasing wins, right? Like, Ty Lue said as much. Will, did you think it was weird he returned? Like, the Clippers needed him to get that win. It was unexpected for me, but, I mean, absolutely necessary. I I, I don't think they have enough to, to get over, especially the way that – Golden State turned it on and how Curry has performed in third quarters really all season this year. Um, they definitely needed they definitely needed the extra firepower. And I was glad that Norm was good enough to go. I don't think that they would have rushed him out there if there was like uh if they if they thought there was a serious chance of, of re-injury or worsening something. But it's definitely something to monitor. I mean, I 
who even moves up into his spot. Like we'll have to talk about the rotation and stuff later, but it's, um, oh. it's kind of a nightmare. Um, it's kind of a nightmare for me. <laughs> yeah. Such a, such a pleasant way <laughs> to convey the nightmare scenario, but I, I share it. I feel like not quite that this is fine dog with the flaming house, but I'm staring at the abyss a little bit. I'm glancing at it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I hope, like you said, the fact that he came back and played in that game is some indication about the severity of it. Hopefully it wasn't just adrenaline carrying him through and it is a more troublesome hamstring injury because those are always tough to manage and are tricky. Dr. Schaap, I was reading some of his tweets earlier. Real doctor. Real doctor. They need they need Norman Powell desperately. And <laughs> I mean, like... How many games has they won where he didn't play well? I think he hasn't played well in maybe three games. Game one, the two in Houston, and that's it out of 15 I mean, so far. And they didn't win any of those. And they weren't close in uh, the, the the Phoenix one they could have won. That was the, game one. They should have won. Yeah. Uh, the but, two yeah. Houston games, eight was, for 29 combined. Not great. Shoot. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> not ideal. Um other than those things, Harden playing a bunch of minutes, uh, Norm being out with a hamstring injury, possibly Zoo's motor, not much else. Discouraging? 20 turnovers again last night. <laughs> oh, sure, but I'm, I'm, I might be numb to those at this point. That's another one of those matchup things where, like, uh, like luckily for us, the Warriors are also kind of a high, high turnover team. Um yeah, I, I don't know. I think we've talked about it here, but like if this team could just get back to say the 14 to 15 range, I'd be really happy. I, there's no way it's realistically going to be much lower than that, but if they could just get it to there, hell, I'd, I'd take 16. Um, I, I I think it's going to look a lot better. Yeah. Outside of that, you know, chug it along. Eight hey, and seven, baby. Eight and seven. Um, with a very interesting couple of games coming up, we're going to talk uh, the Magic and Kings game to close out this week. Obviously, the biggest issue is what's going to go on with Norman Powell's spot. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching us and consuming us visually. Uh, if you're listening to us on audio, there's going to be a quick break. And then we're talking the pretty difficult two games the Clippers have to close this week out. Coming up in three, two, one. All right, we're back in with Clips and Dip. Clippers are above 500. It's great. We're all feeling like it's our year. But they got a tough couple of games coming up. And again, uh, not the greatest of matchups. They're taking on <laughs> the Magic and then the Kings uh, to end this week. Charles, why, why, don't, you, why don't you lead us in? Because we, we kind of <laughs> teased this in the last segment. But with Norm Powell likely missing at least one of these games, um, Who's up? Oh, it's Jordan Miller time. This is this is the opportunity that people have wanted. Maybe it's not how we wanted him to get the opportunity. <laughs> I want how to... did you think it was going to happen? Though? <laughs> right? I'm just I'm yeah. very curious. If you thought he was going to get some significant run this season, how did you think it was going to happen? A little snip snap from Ty Lu. You don't have to worry about locker room politics. You just make the change, baby. Um, no, so what it seems like, and feel free to yell at me if you think that I'm wrong about this, Amir's probably slotting into Norm's starting role. Would be my guess. Yeah. I think Pro it's a, probably. I think it makes a lot more sense than KPJ. Oh, yeah. Because who's handling the ball in the second? Well, year? is it Terrence? Yeah. Or? Since Chris Dunn is already a starter now and you have somebody else to alleviate some of the on-ball stuff with James Harden, it makes sense that it would be Amir. Yeah. Um, and then who slides into Amir's spot? Jordan Miller from those bench. It, it seems like that should happen, right? Easy does it. <laughs> <laughs> done switch is made but that seems like the most logical thing right like miller will probably i mean how many minutes is amir averaging i know it can change every now and then um yeah if he plays well he closes if right. he doesn't somebody else will he's averaging 23 minutes a game i don't think jordan miller's getting 23 minutes maybe unless things are going really well uh against the magic tomorrow but i think we'll see like 
the most minutes that Jordan Miller has played against, not only an NBA defense, the second best NBA defense um, in the league right now. I wonder if Batum gets any extra run. I mean, he hit 20 minutes yesterday. It was the first game where he made multiple three-pointers in a game so far this season. So he's looking better with his shot now after struggling. I don't know if he'll soak up some minutes, but yeah, Jordan Miller, 15 minutes is is likely. That's what it feels like. Yeah. What's the most points anyone's ever scored in 15 minutes? 15? Well, Clay Thompson once had a 37-point quarter in 12, so I don't know yeah. what he did with the other three, but... <laughs> I think Jordan Miller's going to be on that pace. No. Um, <laughs> but they're going to need easy buckets, right, Will? Like, you lose Norm, you lose a guy who can get to the foul line, and Jordan Miller can very much do that, and we will need to muck the game up against the Magic. Yeah, hopefully he's ready to do so at, a, at an NBA level. Um, that's going to be really interesting. I, I think, like... The off ball send, like the off ball stuff, uh, is a lot in my head, at least a lot easier of a role for him to fill. Um, you know, just just shooting in motion, spotting up that kind of stuff. I think he could pretty easily slot into. Um, you know, if you're expecting Norm's sort of production, you're going to be woefully disappointed. But it is, uh, it, I mean, it just is a great opportunity. You know, we talked about, um, unfortunately it was a loss but that game against houston where uh we got some 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 c team minutes or some third up minutes or some some B guys minus teams some guys who were like not even really on the fringe of the rotation uh and you know looked pretty good for the most part so it's it, it it's an exciting opportunity where i i don't know i i don't know how it's gonna pay that the hardest thing like the hardest thing for these guys is just especially when you don't get regular minutes is is establishing any sort of floor of consistency and mm -hmm. i think that that is gonna be an issue for for miller i like the floor of consistency line i'm gonna steal that and use that moving forward i mean i'll say this tar east is one of the better young defenders in the league and he couldn't handle jordan miller without fouling like yeah. that was the guy saw the same fouls. thing with keegan murray that last preseason game I was just looking up with the Orlando Magic give up free throw wise to their opponents every game. I guess it's 22 free throws a game. They're a physical team. That's about 17th in the league. So they don't foul. You know, they're middle of the pack when it comes yeah. to how much they foul. So I'm trying to see can Jordan Miller really take advantage of a team that's just hacking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but he had he had 10 points in what 10 minutes the last game in Houston, and <laughs> almost all of them were at the free throw line. That was crazy. He also bodied Fred Van Vliet on a play who is a good defender while undersized. Like he just yeah. went right through him. I don't know. I, I'm excited for this because oh, yeah. I, just, I just, he's yet to play poorly when you give him an opportunity. Like how are we ever going to find out where his ceiling is? If you don't really challenge him, he's earned this. So I, I hope he gets at least 15 minutes and I hope they're yeah. not, you know, just, Late third quarter, fourth quarter, if somebody's up Real big or anything like that. Yeah, first half minutes in this game. I want to see Yeah, I, I like that. The first half minutes is going to be huge. And again, we're running into a team. The Magic have won six in a row. They played some bad teams, including the 76ers, who, wow, what a what a train wreck that is. Um, what happened there? <laughs> What's going they won, on? They've won six in a row. The most points they've allowed in that six-game stretch is 99. And they've held three teams below 90. Granted, those teams are bad. The Pels, the Hornets, and the 76ers. Um, but that's fairly impressive for a NBA team in 2024. Um, and all, all those games without Ben Carroll, right? Yeah, he's out for a very long time. He played like their first five. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, defensively, <laughs> they're elite. And we kind of knew that about them. Offensively... They're worse than the Clippers, right? Right. Now. It's very odd. We need to score off the turnovers. Um, yeah, they're what, 25th? They're 30th in three-point percentage, so they are yeah. not good shooters. Someone posted the list of players who've attempted over 100 threes with the worst three-point percentage. Jalen Suggs is number two on that list. James Harden is number four. That's neither here nor there. Um but really, like, if anyone not name uh, Franz Wagner is taking a three, I think the Clippers will be happy with that. Yeah. He's kind of killing it. He's at, like, 25. 
23-5-5. and I will say Houston was very low in three-point percentage till they played the Clippers in those two games. But uh, <laughs> So sometimes you get worried about those things. But they have had – I mean, they brought in KCP for a reason. They were looking for a little more mm. juice on offense and a guy that could shoot from the outside. And apparently they were flirting with bringing in Paul George for a reason too. But uh, things worked out. He went to Philly. Dodged uh, a bullet there. Damn. God. Happy for my magic. <laughs> um, yeah, other than the the Norm Powell loss, who are we looking at on the bench to begin this one? Because the bench was also a huge part of why we beat the Warriors um, last time. KPJ had an awful first half. Awful first half. After having his best game of the season against Utah, and maybe – that answers everything. It's because it was against Utah. I don't know, but I've really felt like his playmaking was on point. Like he was really making sure to be a pass first guy. And he went back and reverted back to some of the old bad habits. But right before he went out, he had that big block. Uh, who was that on oh, pods? Yeah. And then he had the and one play where unfortunately he got hurt, banged his head, couldn't finish the and one that off. He had to take cool. the free throw. Yeah. So if he's available and he's not on the injury report, so I'm guessing he is. Uh, I, Coach Lou will probably turn to him for maybe even more minutes because Norm Powell's out. Yeah, got to be better. Well, who you got coming off the bench to to stop the dark arts of the Magic? I mean, I think that this would be a great time for for Terrence's sort of improved um, aggression <laughs> and <laughs> like and his offense shining through a little bit more. I think you know when he has the keys. Um, he, he's just a little bit more in rhythm, a little bit more in flow. We've seen him certainly be a lot more confident out there. And I think, um, you know, his minutes, his minutes will likely see a bump up too. I mean, still maybe not in closing lineups, depending on what's going on there and, and how Amir looks. But, um, yeah, I, I think Terrence has a, has a real opportunity here, especially with coming off the momentum that he's had in these last few games. Yeah. Dunn too. That closing lineup is going to be interesting because Dunn didn't close versus the Warriors. Um, so yeah, that's, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Norm, unfortunately, will not be playing on his bobblehead night, which bums me out. If I'm being oh, totally is there some bobblehead curse thing with this? Haven't we seen this before? <laughs> I think so. Can I guess right before. Yeah. The funniest, depending on your definition of funny, uh, Kawhi's bobblehead date is still TBD. Fans were telling us. Which see, I'm not believing anything until we get a bobblehead date with him <laughs> when he's returning. Um, so after they battle the second best team in the NBA at defense, again, very bad in offense. They're taking a ton of threes. They're almost top ten in three point attempts, but they're literally dead last in I, three point percentage. I like the fact. In fact, Carlo texted me this earlier today, and I think he's right. Carlo, he Jimenez. said. Yeah, he said, I'm liking this matchup, two slow teams. Like They do play at the Clippers' pace. Like It's going to be, I don't yeah. know, first to 80 wins. <laughs> oh, God. For all those people who wanted old school basketball back, we've got it and into it on Wednesday night. Um, yeah, I'm looking up the half-court offensive ratings. They're going to build another wall with all the bricks. <laughs> um, with all the great defense. Leading yes, some the great wall, of, the great wall of defense. Um, <laughs> all right, so they don't really have. All right, anyway, um, then they play the Kings, who we have annoyed. We held them to ninety eight last time, but that was with the previous. <laughs> that was with the previous starting lineup. Jaron Fox is on a heater. I don't know. We only had a nine guy rotation. Uh, how are we feeling about the new look clips? against the Kings. Will, are you hyped? Um, with no norm, that's a pretty tall order. Um, TBD, but I think hey, hey, right hey. on that one. I it's think our year. He could be back. He <laughs> could be back. Um, Because just even with as good as the, the Clippers defense has been and can be, that's, that's a tall order. You're not stopping everything. Um, so I think keeping pace with that. At the same time, though, I do kind of like that matchup. Um, I, I, I do like that matchup stylistically for the Clippers. Yes, you have the athleticism and, um, you know, some of the speed, uh, but at the same time, uh, an equally kind of smaller, um, a smaller kind of lineup. We've seen Zoo be really effective down low in that. 
Um, I, I I like I like that line. I like that matchup a little bit more than the Magic matchup, just because of some of the things that we've seen so far. And I think I'm just still reeling from like the double Rockets loss. But uh, I I do like that matchup. No Norm. Somebody is going to have to like somebody's going to have to have a breakout, and it's maybe be KPJ. But um, he scored. I mean, he scored. Somebody, yeah. So somebody's going to have to do it. Him and Amir combined for 25 points. Were the only people that scored off the bench the last time we played him. So this could also be another Terrence Mant, right? Like, it's interesting. We only played again. No Kai Jones last time. We wonder if Bomb is going to get some look or something, but. They almost gave the way gave away the game late with like four yep. turnovers in the last four minutes or something. Evergreen statement that you just said, Adam. That could be said. I think we could just run that clip for every episode. Yeah, Ty was pissed. Like after the game, Ty was pretty upset. I mean, as upset as coaches get about that kind of thing in public, um, about the the late game turnovers. So I'm equally stressed about both these games. I agree with Will, though. I do like the matchup a little bit more against Sacramento. Maybe it's just because we're familiar with them. Pack Div game, and they beat them earlier this season, and it's somewhat some Jeez. recency bias going on here. But I feel better going up against smaller, quicker teams, like especially when the head of the snake is that guy, Steph yeah. Curry last night, De'Aaron Fox with Sacramento, than the brute athletic teams like we saw in Houston. I just like that matchup. I don't hate Zubats going up against Sabonis. Sabonis isn't a great rim protector or anything like that. Sacramento, I think, is like 14th defensively right now. They've yeah. been getting better there, and they're six on offense. But I don't know. They shut the water off uh, in a lot of different ways last time. And that game was up in Sacramento when they beat them. So yeah. I, I, I don't hate it. I mean, be careful what you wish for. If they don't have Norm, <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. But if you slow down De'Aaron Fox, it just feels like it takes them so far away from their offensive game plan. Like, you really can get a stranglehold on it. And I hope we see more, you know, no Norm means the hard man Amir Nico Zoo lineup can be out there. We can see maybe Derek Jones Jr. getting switched in there for Zoo to get the not, you know, get the small ball five going. I just want to point out, you mentioned this is a Pacific Division matchup. Mm. I'm looking at the divisional standings as I do every day. Um, Pacific Division, only team where, or only division where every team has a winning record. Lovely. It's routinely, I feel like, the hardest division in basketball. Oh, the best division in basketball. Um, my documentary <laughs> will prove that later this year. <laughs> it's called It Really Matters, I Swear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, screw the cup. Let's make divisional <laughs> play. Let's make that a thing. How about that, Mr. Silver? Uh, That's a, Friday's it, game is in season. I was going to say it's a it's a cup game too, right? Because it's Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, I hope the I hope the uh, supporters of the division and the supporters of the cup don't clash or anything like that. Let's keep it peaceful out there, guys. We should unite. <laughs> is there the any bottom. way we can win the game but somehow forfeit the cup win? Is that is that a possibility? <laughs> yeah. What if a team just opts out of the cup? They're just like, I, this is just regular season. We're not counting this <laughs> for the cup. <laughs> Group plays dumb. What are we yeah. doing here? Um, I really, I do though. I don't want to lose another group game in the cup. Didn't really win one last year. Did we win one? <laughs> I think we won one, dude. Yeah, I think it was one. Um, yeah. all right. We talked this matchup now for the most important part. Second most important part of the episode. Uh, the most important part is coming up quickly. Um, player of the game picks for both games. One of the hardest things to do is to pick a guy who's going to be good for both games. Um, Adam, I think you went last last time, so you can go first, and then we'll, and then I will decide. Last shall be first. I'm coming off the bench just like Jordan Miller. He's my player that I'm picking here. Jordan Miller for both games, baby. <laughs> what are I, we envisioning here? 50 10 to 12 right? points. <laughs> 10 to 12 points, total annihilation of the competition. Uh, the most and, demoralizing 12 points ever scored against a team. Just a handful, a tough guy to uh, wrangle because he wants to get downhill and gets to the rim. I, I hope he just causes chaos with 
uh, rotations with the opposition's defense, trying to figure out a way to slow him down, and that opens up things for others. I know it's crazy to say that about a guy who hasn't played any meaningful NBA basketball yet, but that's all he's done with whatever minutes he's ever gotten. So I'm going to I'm gonna say it's real, and I think he can do it. So I'm hoping there's not too much pressure. I posted a Transformer-like gif earlier, talking about him going from hot rod to Rodimus. Don't Prime. want there to be too much pressure? Yeah, I <laughs> You're know. comparing I him that. to the greatest? <laughs> I know. Arise, Jordan Miller. It's your time. He's also left-handed, which gives him uh, an extra boost. Everyone knows that. Uh, Will, your pick for the Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Avica Zubats, Norm Powell, inaugural player of the game for the cup. You can pick Norm. <laughs> go for it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> for both games. Uh, I'm going to stick with my guy, Terrence. Uh, I, I, think that, I, I think that he has a real opportunity to step – to, to step things up right now and in i don't want to say a no pressure situation but a better situation than it seems like maybe he was in with the starting lineup for for whatever reason uh i i just don't it it wasn't the greatest it wasn't the greatest fit for him that wasn't the best terrence that we saw out there but if we could get if he could get into double digits in one of these two games i feel like i'd be pretty happy like if if he could go like 12 and 9 or or flip it over uh over the two games. I think that that would go a long way. I think the chunky think, stat line. Yeah. The chunky stat line. That's fair. Um, okay. So we got Jordan Miller. We got Terrence Mann. Damn. I kind of have a, a wide array to pick, actually. Um, you know what? What if Bones gets minutes with Norm out? I'm not picking Bones. I'll, I'll say just, that. <laughs> I, that's in my contract as the skeleton key guy. I just had to bring it up just in case. <laughs> the skeleton tree contract you had to sign in blood. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. We're going to need someone to score against Orlando, obviously. Might turn into some kind of weird track meet against the Kings if the defense isn't exactly there for the Clippers, which it has been all year. Um, I've picked him a lot, and he hasn't really let me down, but he hasn't proved me entirely right yet. Derek Jones Jr., he can run against the Kings. He's going to be asked to probably do more than he usually does on defense against the Magic just because of the size issues. Um, another guy, though, like to Will's point with Terrence, if he can get plus 10 points efficiently, run the break, help him win, you know, points off turnovers, stuff like that, that will be very much needed uh, these next two games. I like He's that. had a very underrated year, I think, so far for the Clippers. Not that yeah. he should be in some kind of consideration for awards, but – He's definitely overplaying his contract, I think. Good guy award. Oh, how could I forget? Fuck. How could I forget the good guy award? Derek Jones, if you're listening, I think I think you should get the good guy award. What do you guys uh, guess he's shooting from three so far? 41.6. You don't respect him, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, will you guess? Uh 43? 44. Stop. Damn. I, it's early. It's not, It's going to go down, but there's early? a real good chance. Someone just said I don't know. Pretty over, big sample size. We're over a pretty large percentage of the season. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We're, <laughs> we're 20% of the year in. There's a real good chance he's going to finish above league average from three this season with this hot start. Hell and yeah. that's phenomenal. I think I think he's a grinder like, like Norm. Like This is another guy who's just waiting for his opportunity, waiting for his opportunity. I love having him as a Clipper now. Oh, yeah. It rules. Um, all right. That wraps it up. Let us know your picks over at Clippers Pod um, or at YouTube.com slash at Clippers Podcast, where some people have voiced their very loud opinions um, about what this team should do. Coming up, we're talking <laughs> the one Kawhi thing that came out and then some good Steve Ballmer news. It's going to be an audio break and then right back to you in three, two. Welcome back in. It's Clips and Dip. I'm Adam Moslem. We got Chuck Mockler and Will Updike here. The big three are with you once again. It's season three, episode 29. And yesterday, we got some... <clears throat> something. We got... We got Kawhi... Kawhi was mentioned by head coach Terod Liu after Ramona Shelbourne asked him a question in the pregame presser yesterday of what he has been doing. And what he has been doing is... Uh, some shooting. Some shooting. Ooh, I ran through a wall when I heard shooting that. Shooting what, though? 
Magpies are deep again. Um, yeah, we're, we're the same wavelength. No, this was like, I felt nothing when I heard this. I felt angry when I saw the aggregators. Like, like I don't ever do this, but <laughs> when I saw people angry. really try to turn this into something. It's like, guys, it is. I was in the room. Coach Sue was basically laughing after saying it. Some shooting. Like, what are we talking about here? When you hear it, it it doesn't make you more hopeful. I even just reading it. What does some shooting mean? He doesn't have an arm injury or anything like that. Like, how how is he not able to shoot, set shots without moving? Like, he's obviously sitting on the bench. He can walk. It's it's not something where he would be able to do stationary shooting with. So why is anybody taking this and making something out of it? He's doing lethal shooter stuff. He's throwing the gummy bear in the water bottle. <laughs> we don't need Kawhi. Near he any... understands it now. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was playing. <laughs> we don't need Kawhi near any spinning blades or flames, <laughs> given the the injury thing. Um, yeah, this gives us no insight into his return at all. Fair Coach... haggle, no haggle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually surprised because I thought the bigger one was from the the press conference where he says we're waiting just waiting on two to get back the post game what he said yeah yeah like i thought more people would have jumped on that because that yeah. does give i don't know doesn't that give like a, a hint a of, a, to of, an, of an imminent return there i feel like that was kind of like i was kind of surprised i, I was the reason i even bring it up is because i was surprised that he even said that normally we don't talk about quite Leonard's absence or his return or what's going on there uh they're required just, just kind I guess, of unspoken once a, once a week they're required to give an update and ramona was like it's monday so what's the latest with Kawhi?" and that was the update i damn i don't know i you know everybody was like and what book he's reading <laughs> dude that would be dude the the Kawhi book club where we all pick a book to read uh yeah that'd be a good time what book is Kawhi reading it's the art of war, right? It's just there seems to be a pattern here where everybody Kawhi gets, gets excited about a report that is pretty meaningless because Kawhi can't know when he's back yet. And everybody goes, Law's saying he's going to play in game one against Dallas. And then Law's saying he's going to be back by the second week, no week of November. Well, it's uh, November 19th. Like, it, this is no slight or anything against Law Murray. It's everyone freaking out about reports of information no one can have because Kawhi can't even have it. So what are we doing here? Like until his knee responds the right way, <laughs> we're 15 games into the season and he's not practicing with the team yet. And then when he practices, well, that's going to put more stress on the knee. Is it going to respond well from that? I just, I don't know. I'm not trying to be a downer about it, but come on. What are we talking about right now? I think the thing people should take away from this as of 6.56 p.m. on November 19th, they're above 500 without Kawhi. They've played a pretty brutal schedule, all things considered. There's not, like, that's yeah. great. <laughs> like, let's not, let's not cloud it with anything else. A don't lot of people are just operating like, this is the team we have. If Kawhi comes back, it's a it's a bonus. But this is the team we have. I think so, that's where you have to be at, to, to be honest. Until until there's indications otherwise. Until we get some kind of metaphor before some kind of normal exercise, explosive boss jumps. You know what I mean? Um, something like that. Um, he, he could he could they could say you know he's playing this upcoming game, and I'll be like cool. He can play the game, and I'll be like cool. Let me know how he responds afterwards. That's what I'm looking for. Can he play 10 straight Can games? Can he play, play seven of 10 games? Like, I I don't know. I, I We've been through this. I do want to test that theory, though, because I do want to see your reaction when there is news that Kawhi's going to play. I, I was, well, you're right. It, that, could, <laughs> that could change. And the juxtaposition with what I just said now, and I'm like, it's on boys it's on here we go here we go to the top of the west no I, I i was somewhat measured when he played game two but i was like hey let's see how he responds the next day i kept asking that and they didn't respond well so 
at this point when you're talking about swelling and if the surgery happened in May, uh, it's November 19th and he's not back. <laughs> when, when, when was it that Lawrence Frank said the swelling was almost gone? Was that two months ago? Yes. At least. Yeah. I just, but when is the time? Guard your heart. Me? When is the timeline? I, I, I kind of got lost on this. When is the timeline on the procedure? Did we even get, do we know a month for that? They didn't say when in May. They just said in yeah, May. May. So, yeah. so you would think he's getting close. Right? You could think <laughs> that. I would have thought he tried <laughs> to play in Team USA. Like, then there was a setback. But don't worry, there hasn't been a setback since then. It's like, well, we didn't even know there was a setback then. I don't know. It's all, he's not, like, like Dr. Schaap said, he's not playing. You can consider this a setback. The season has started and he's not out there yet. How is it not a setback? He didn't That's have. Don't call it a setback. <laughs> I've been out for years. What are all these cleanup procedures that take six uh, months to recover from? I'm pretty sure a cleanup isn't supposed to be talked about as, hey, they'll be back in six months after this right. cleanup. Yeah. It's no, not like a cleanup a is like person. a guy is back in like three weeks or a month. Well, yeah. that's how depend, that's interpreted. Doesn't it, de doesn't it depend though on the in, like invasiveness of the procedure? But I think then it wouldn't be categorized as a cleanup. <laughs> like it would be called something else. Cleanup, ah, you know, little, Scrub. little particles here, some bone marrow flying around, like <laughs> just a little cleanup. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. It's, it's obviously not responding the way they would like it to, or is it already back by now. Period. How can that not be the case? Period. But I do uh, still want to throw out there, like on the hopeful side, I think we all said, you know, if this team can hang around 500, a little above 500, if we can eventually get 35 to 40 games out of Kawhi Leonard, I'm not hating that output. If it's 20, you know, uh -uh. if it's if it's 35 healthy games, I'm, you know, I'm I'm kind of liking those odds. But so we're still on track for that, that this hypothetical that well, we just made up. We also um, were saying like 55 games like a month ago, and now it's already I was down not, to like. I think we all lowered our expectations. I don't way think past I said 55. Uh, all right. I said I'd like 55, and then I think I went, you know what? He's not because then you were like, he's not playing back to backs. Before the season started, everybody was like, okay, let's say he plays 50 games. Now we're saying let's say he plays 35 games. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it has drastically gone down already. I said I'd sign up for 41 to somebody a week ago if he could play 41 cool, games. Move. It happens in every sport all the time, <laughs> especially with a knee injury. <sighs> um, to end on some good news, uh, Steve Ballmer uh, recently donated $1.9 million to Compton College that will assist with the college's efforts to improve academic pathways and ensure students have what they need to complete their coursework and transfer to university as quickly as possible. Good move by Steve Ballmer. Maybe could have been a little more cash uh, given his wealth, but who am I to judge? I'm not pocket watching, but it's difficult when the pockets are the largest pockets in the entire world. Um, but good guy, Steve Ballmer for doing that. And the Clippers partnered with 24 hour fitness, Did I believe to be like the official gym partner of the Clippers. Why wouldn't it be LA fitness? I don't know. Adam, you got to be hyped on that. What gym do you go to? I'm back. I haven't been to 24 for a while, but I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> you walk in, everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> Lifting at two in the morning was different. <laughs> I bet it <laughs> Those is. college days. <laughs> Man, one time in college, uh, we were at a party and there was like a, some workout gear. Nothing better than a, a house party. Just have a couple drinks, wearing jeans, hoodie. Getting, getting your lift on a little bit, you know? Yeah. You're just doing polar opposite things. Like, yeah, it offsets. It's a neutral <laughs> night from that perspective. Um, I worked out. I can get blasted. Yeah. I can work out. Wow. I, wow. What a day. Um, college is an important time for you to learn new skills. All right. We need to get out of here. We have some double dips coming up after these games. I will not snake Will next time because uh, the Clippers are probably going to win both. So it probably will be Will. Um, doing a post-game live hang uh, versus the Magic. Maybe the Friday game too. Clips travel to Philly on Sunday, which we'll see how that goes. I know how we all want it to go. Um, will, where can these people uh, – reference in the meeting with their boss about their, you know, potential upcoming pay raise. Um, 
can where can they tell their boss to listen to us? Yeah, I mean, in any negotiation, you want to be sure and cite this podcast, which you can listen to on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere you get podcasts. The best way, though, to check it out is still over on YouTube.com. That's at Clippers Podcast. Um, yeah, you'll want, you'll want to make sure to tune into every episode, as we'll definitely have the answers on what's going on with Kawhi Leonard. But however you uh, ingest this podcast, just know that we appreciate you. We absolutely do. Adam. Send these Clippers fans out with one positive thing before we get out of here. Hey, we beat the Warriors twice. Only one other team had beaten the Golden State Warriors, and that team had only lost uh, – well, they've lost one game now. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Bums. Yeah, I I don't know. Have they made up for – I kind of think they made up for that loss already to Portland by getting two wins against Golden State this early. I said they have to make up for that somewhere. Yeah. I think it might have happened last night. I agree with that. I'm also going game by game, man. I can't see shit behind me in this rear view window. M- moving forward. <laughs> yeah. To Orlando. Or, oh, yeah. To Orlando. <laughs> um, all right. That about wraps it up. Thank you all for listening. And as always, let's go Clips.